Hey guys, this is Mrs. Rooker, and I'm going to be doing day five with you, dividing radical expressions. So, um, when we're dividing radical expressions, that's typically going to look like fractions. Um, and some big things that you need to know is that if you see one big radical with a fraction under it, that means the exact same thing as it broken down into two separate radicals. So you can switch between one big radical and two broken apart radicals, um, and you can go, and that goes both, both ways. Um, another important thing that I need you to know about dividing radicals is you're going to want to reduce fraction first, and then deal with breaking down radicals second. So radicals, remember radicals are square roots or, or roots. Oops. That's going to be my big hint of advice. It is almost always going to make your life a lot easier, easier if you reduce the fraction first if possible and then break down the radicals second. All right, uh, so let's get started. Simplify the radical expression. So this one's actually simple, super straightforward. Um, I would ask you to try to break down the fraction first. So just look at 9 fourths, ignore the radical. But unfortunately, nothing goes into 9 and 4, or fortunately maybe. So we, in this case, can't break down the fraction. So we are instead going to split this into two separate radicals. And the nice thing about these two radicals is they're both perfect squares. So now we simplify the radical. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 4 is 2. Just double check and make sure there's nothing else that can be simplified. We can't break down 3 halves, so that's our final answer. Now let's move on to the next one. So this is where my little hint of advice about reducing the fraction first this is where this comes into play. Some of you might look at this and see that we've got a square root of 81 and be really tempted to reduce that radical. But I'm going to recommend that you not do that and you instead look at the fraction that we've got here. Remember, this is the same as if we made it one big radical. And if you just look at 18 over 81, ignore the radical, just look at the fraction you can reduce that fraction because 9 goes into both 81 and 18. So this becomes square root of 2, 18 divided by 9 is 2, over 9. Which again, remember this means the same thing as two radicals split apart. A lot of times I don't even rewrite it if you just recognize that those mean the same thing. So now that the fraction's been reduced, now we deal with breaking down the actual radicals. Root two can't be simplified, but square root of nine can be simplified. So square root of two just stays square root of two. Square root of nine is three. And remember when we square root something, the root goes away, the root symbol. That is our final answer because the fraction can't be reduced anymore, and the radicals are fully simplified. All right, now we're dealing with some cube roots, uh, but the idea is still the same. We still want to deal with breaking down or reducing the fraction first, if possible, and then dealing with the radical. So just think about 121, sorry, 128, over 8. We're just looking at the fraction, we're not worrying about the radical. It would be really nice if 8 goes into 128, that would reduce it a lot. Um, so let's try that. 128 divided by 8, it does go in evenly. So I'm going to divide both of these by 8, and I get uh, 16 over 1, which I don't really need to write the over 1. 
So it's just going to be 16. But I need to not forget about the fact that these were cube roots. We still have cube root. I just reduced the fraction. I haven't reduced the radical yet. But now that that's mostly simplified, I just need to break down the radical. Remember, with cube roots, I need to break this down and I need to get groups of three to escape jail. So this breaks into four times four. Four breaks into two times two. Four breaks into two times two. There's a group of three, which means three twos, or sorry, two breaks out. And a two stays in. Really important not to forget that this was a cube root. A cube root is very different than a square root, so you need to still have that little three on your index. Right, so that's our final answer for that one, because the radical is fully simplified, and obviously the fraction was fully simplified, because there's no longer a fraction. All right, um, so I think right now I'm going to have you guys pause the video and try this problem on your own. Remember to reduce the fraction first before trying to break down that 36 or the 16. So reduce the fraction first. Um, when you unpause the video, I'll work through this with you guys. All right, so let's break down the fraction. What goes into both 36 and 16? Um, well, I know 2 goes into both, but 4 also goes into both. And 4 is bigger, so let's go with 4. We end up with 9 over 4. Don't forget about the radical. Now we're going to deal with square rooting. We can rewrite this if you want to. I'm not going to be too picky about students rewriting it every time. But square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 4 is 2. And that's our final answer. Fully reduced. If you guys want to pause the video on this one too so you can try it on your own, remember to reduce the fraction first. Um, and then when you unpause, I'll work on it with you guys. Alright, so I'm just looking at the fraction 32 over 2. That's all I'm focusing on right now. Dividing top and bottom by 2, I get 16 over 1, which again, I don't need to write the over 1. That's just going to be 16. But don't forget, this was all under a radical. Okay? So I've still got a radical there. That's the last thing I have to deal with. What's the square root of 16? Well, that's a perfect square. It's 4. Remember, a really good idea to memorize your perfect squares if you haven't already. But hopefully you have. And then this one, a little, this one's a little more challenging, um, well, a little bit. Try this one if you want, or if you want to pause the video. Otherwise, you can just continue watching, and I'll do it with you. So I would try to reduce the fraction, but the fraction's fully simplified. You can't reduce 1 over 27. So instead, I'm going to split this into two radicals, uh, cube root of 1 over cube root of 27. Cube root of 1 is a perfect square because 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So the cube root of 1 is 1. 27 is also, sorry, I said perfect square, I meant perfect cube. Um, 27 is also a perfect cube. If you had forgotten that it's a perfect cube, you could break this down. 27 breaks into 9 and 3. 9 breaks into 3 and 3. And we've got our group of 3 there, so that means 3 breaks out. Nothing's still in jail, so my answer is just one third. All right, so that is it for that section. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to catch up on writing all this stuff down. And then I'm going to move on to the next section. All right, so rationalize the denominator. That's a term that you're going to get familiar with. Uh, rationalizing the denom denominator means get rid of the radical on the bottom. So something that you guys need to know is that you are not 
allowed to have a radical on the bottom of a fraction. Okay. You are never allowed to have an answer that has a radical or a square root, cube root, any kind of root on the bottom of the fraction. So, look at number four. This is pretty much simplified other than the fact that we have this square root symbol on the bottom of the fraction. We don't want the square root on the bottom. The way to get rid of that is to cancel it out. To cancel out a square root, well remember, a root will go away or the radical symbol will go away if we have a perfect square. So we need to turn this into a perfect square. The way to do that is to multiply it by itself. Um, so we're gonna multiply by root two. But that changes the value of our expression. We wanna keep it balanced. So just like with an equation, whatever you do to the left, you have to do to the right. With fractions, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top to keep it um, equivalent, to keep it equal. So, oops. On the bottom, we're going to have um, root two times root two is root four, and square root of four just reduces to two. So what's always gonna happen here is root two times root two is just gonna cancel to normal two. All right, and then the top, this number is outside of jail, this number is inside jail, so they can't mix. They're going to stay separate as three root two, okay. which can't really be simplified. Um, and then some students might be tempted to simplify these twos, but you want to be really careful about that. This two is under a radical, and the two on the bottom is not, which means they are completely different number values. Root two isn't the same as two. Root two is actually like 1.4 or something. They're not the same. So if it's under a radical, it can't reduce with something that isn't under a radical. So that's our final answer. Moving on, um, I can't do much simplifying or really any simplifying on this other than rationalizing the denom denominator. I would try to reduce the fraction, but nothing goes into five and six. I would also try to break down these radicals. Five doesn't break down at all. Six breaks into three and two, but that doesn't give me any pairs, so it doesn't do anything for me. So I'm done except for the fact that I am not allowed to have a root on the bottom. So to get rid of the root on the bottom, I multiply top and bottom by root six. I always just multiply top and bottom by itself. The bottom will become root six times root six is root 36, and then the square root of 36 is just six. Sorry, the square root of 36 is just six. All right, the top. Five is under a radical and six is under a radical, which means they can actually multiply together. This is going to be root 30, uh, which you would try to break down. This just breaks into five and six, which we already had. And then six breaks into two and three. There's no pairs from that though. So that doesn't help me at all. So my answer is just going to be root 30 over six. And remember, I can't reduce that fraction because the 30 is under the radical and the 6 is not, so I can't reduce them. Now it gets a little more challenging when we have cube roots. Um, we can't just multiply by cube root of 3 because cube root of 3 times cube root of 3 would be cube root of 9. 9 isn't a perfect cube. For cube roots, we need a total of three threes in order to have a three break out of the radical. So instead of just multiplying by root three, I'm gonna multiply by cube root of three times three. That way what I end up with is cube root of 27 on the bottom. That's three threes, three times three times three is 27. And that will reduce to just three. So a little shortcut here, if I multiply by uh, cube root of three times three, I've got 
three threes there, so a three just breaks out of the radical and there's no more radical left. But remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So I have to multiply by cube root of three times three on top. Six is outside of the radical, the threes are under the radical, so they can't combine. They'll just stay separate. Six cube root of three times three is nine. All right, now look at this. This actually can reduce. So take a, take a look at that and think about which numbers can reduce. If you were thinking the six and the three, you'd be correct because they're both outside of a radical. Um, three goes into both of them, so divide both by three, we end up with two and one. So this will be two cube root of nine over one, which we don't need to write. And cube root of 9 can't break down because it's a cube root, not a square root. All right, I'm going to try to bust through these last two really, really quick so I don't like, take too long. Um, so this one, 2 fifths can't reduce, so I'm going to split it into cube root of 2 over cube root of 5. Um, and I can't break down either of those radicals, so the only thing I have to do is rationalize the denominator. I need a total of three fives because I'm dealing with cube roots. I already have one five here, so I need two more fives. Whatever I do on bottom, I do on the top. So the bottom becomes five times five times five is 125. The cube root of 125 is five. Or you could have just looked at this as you've got, oops, I need to circle. You've got three fives. So a five breaks out. Okay. The top, they're all under the radical, so they can actually multiply together. Five times five is 25, times two is 50. And all this breaks down to is five times five times two, and there's no groups of three, so that can't break down. I also can't reduce because this is under a radical and this is not. So that's our final answer. All right. Um, pause the video really quick and try D on your own. All you have to do is rationalize the denominator. And then when you unpause the video, I will have the work shown for you. All right. This is your final answer for D. If you have questions on that, ask your teacher in class. All right. And then the last one, pause the video and try this one on your own. And when you unpause, I'll work through it with you. All right, so this one, you can't reduce the fraction. Um, so I'm going to split this into two separate radicals, square root of 4 over square root of 7. You can reduce one of these radicals. Square root of 4 is just 2. That was a perfect square. But square root of 7 can't reduce. And then remember, you can't leave an answer like this because you can't leave a root on the bottom. So we are going to multiply top and bottom by root 7. I only need one more 7 because this is a square root. I only need a total of two 7s on the bottom to break out of the radical. So root 7 times root 7 is root 49, which just becomes 7. And then the 2 and the 7 can't combine because one's in jail and one's not. So that's our final answer. I can't reduce the 7s. Don't do that because one's under the radical and one's not. So that's our final answer. All right, that's it. Thank you guys. Have a good one.